Hello, everybody. Bienvenidos a la Casa Blanca. Uh, muchas gracias. Thank you, Roxana, for sharing her story. Please give Roxana a huge round of applause. She is an inspiration to all of us for not only everything she does for other people, but she just has a beautiful smile, and, and you can just tell she has a wonderful spirit, and it's a reminder of why we do what we do. I know Joe and I feel the same way about this. Uh, and by the way, give it up for the best vice president we've ever had. Good also, give it up for our performers, Prince Royce. Ballet Hispanico and DJ Ladies. Now, the main reason I'm here is just to say thank you. Uh, as I look around this room, there are people who, if it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't be here. Uh, there are members of this administration who have done just incredible work day in, day out. Uh, and all of you mean so much to me and Michelle and Joe and Bill, and so uh, for us to be able to, to be here today uh, on Hispanic Heritage Month and let you know how much we appreciate you uh, is really meaningful for me. And you know, this month reminds us that this is one of the richest heritages in the world. Yes. And the United States is blessed to share so much of it. Traditions, food, music, of course, from Colombia and Cuba, Dominican Republic, countries across Central America, South America. You know, it's, wo it's woven into our daily lives. And of course, I'm going to get to Mexico. I can't, I can't, I can't checklist everybody. It, it, it's <laughs> Puerto Rico is awesome, and Venezuela, Nicaragua, Honduras, Chile, Argentina, Paraguay, Ecuador, Bolivia, what else? El Salvador. <laughs> okay, that's it. The point is <laughs> that, that this is all woven into the fabric of our lives. It, it, it's part of what makes us Americans. And over the last eight years, we've made a lot of progress together for all Americans. And nowhere have you been able to see more vividly the progress than in the Hispanic American community. Together, we declared health care is not a privilege for a few, but a, a right for everybody. And Roxana talked about how it's helping her. We've got 20 million people across the country who have health care who didn't have it before. And that includes 4 million Hispanic Americans. Together, we worked to improve our education system. And we lifted our nation's high school graduation rate to an all-time high. More Hispanic students are graduating high school and more are going to college than ever before. We're providing more opportunities for young Latino men through our My Brother's Keeper initiative. Yesterday, my team hosted 200 Latino youth here at the White House to discuss our progress and to look for ways that we can make even more. Last year alone, Latinos experienced the fastest income growth and the biggest drop in poverty of any group here in the United States. And we've opened up a new chapter with the people of Cuba, which could not have been, could not have been possible without the help of the extraordinary Cuban-American community. So, so we've done so much together. Uh, if you think about our partnership with Mexico uh, on not just issues like immigration, but also on energy and educational and cultural exchanges. 
and you know, the, the ways in which we are trying to protect our climate together so that we have a planet to pass on to our children and our grandchildren uh, that is as beautiful as the one we inherited. On, on all of these issues, we couldn't do what we do. We would not be doing as well as we do. We're not for an amazing Hispanic American community, but also the relations that we have with the hemisphere. So we've done a lot of work together, but we know we've got more work to do. We've got to give every child the ability to get the great education they need, a world-class education, so that they can aspire to do whatever uh, their dreams might tell them to do. We've got to make sure that women are paid equally. We've got to make sure that workers like Roxana have a living wage so that they can support a family. We've got to reform our criminal justice system so that it is smart and it is fair. And Lord knows we need to reform our immigration system so that it is smart and continues to make us a nation of laws and a nation of immigrants. And we've known all along that we weren't going to get everything done during one presidency. It was going to take, I can't do that. Can't do that, Michelle. Michelle says, no mas. Uh, she's like Roberto Duran. No mas. We all, know, we all knew that it was going to take more than one presidency, one vice presidency, to get this done. But we're going to get it done, because we know where we need to go. We're not going to get there by tearing each other down, demonizing each other, turning on one another, trying to suggest that somehow there, there's, there's one group that is more deserving and others who are outsiders. We're going to make progress by pulling all of the, the, the wonderful strands of America together uh, into one beautiful tapestry. That's what we're going to do. Because we can always achieve more together than we can apart. And, I, and, and you know what's convinced me of that more than anything is the time that I've spent with so many of you during the course of these years. You, you remind me all the time of what's possible. Uh, you know, as you may know, I read 10 letters every night. Uh, that are selected out of the 40,000 that we receive, just so that I'm able to, you know, keep a pulse on what's happening uh, outside of this bubble that we live in. And, you know, there's, there's a letter that I got a few months ago that struck with me, uh, that, that really stuck with me. It's from a young woman named Charmaine Ortega. She's a child of immigrants in Tucson, Arizona. She's not here today, but I wanted to share just a little bit of her letter. Charmaine had a humble upbringing. Her family often struggled to make ends meet, but her mother kept Charmaine and her brothers focused on one thing, and that is achieving their dreams. So Charmaine became a community organizer. She fought to make sure that kids are getting a good education. Now, I should tell you, community organizing is not a lucrative career path. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it actually turns out okay. So last year, Charmaine received her diploma from the University of Arizona. Her commitment to serving others led her to enlist in the Navy. And she wrote, I strive for the best and I hope to be a person who helps other young people in America find their inner strength and reach for their dreams. So the point is that here's somebody who, she wasn't dealt the best hand. She wasn't born on third base. She could have given up, or she could have complained, or she could have focused on all the disadvantages that she had. But not only did she push through whatever obstacles there were, she actually used her gifts and her talents to then give back and to knock down barriers for other people. She wanted to share her faith in our country. She wanted to share her gifts. And that is why I am always optimistic. Even during some crazy days during this campaign season, because I know people like Charmaine all across the country, and a lot of them are here uh, in this room. You make me optimistic. You make me proud. 
I see young people like Charmaine all the time. I see families like Roxana's all the time. And, and Joe and I, we have lunch once a week, and we always talk about the fact that no matter what problems we may have, uh, we are so blessed and we are so lucky to be in this country. And, 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 and it is so important for all of us to make sure that we continue to lift up those dreams uh, because others are watching. Others are still looking at this beacon of light. America still gives people hope. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, we fulfill uh, the promise of this amazing country. You help us do it. And that's why I just want to once again say thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Si se puede.